Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Before you can apply formatting to a shape, you need to click it in order to select it. If selecting a text box or word art as a shape, ensure that you click on its border so that the border appears as a solid line. That indicates that the shape has been selected and will not place it into its text editing mode. Once the shape has been selected, you'll see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon, right here. And it's this tab that provides you with several formatting options for the selected object. At the far left end of the Format tab in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab of the ribbon is the Insert Shapes group. That's the first group that we'll look at right here. The large scroll box in this group contains quick access to the shapes that you can insert and functions in the same exact way that the Shapes button on the Insert tab does. You'll see all the same shapes available that you could insert into your publication. To the right of that are two additional buttons, the Edit Shape button and the Edit Text button. For shapes that are drawn by hand, such as the scribble shape, you can click the Edit Shape button after you have finished drawing the shape objects in order to display the editing points of the object. You could then go into the object and click on these editing points and move them to change the shape of the object if you so desire. You can also click the Edit Text button right here to add text to a selected shape by placing it into text editing mode. Now, as you can simply type on your keyboard to add text to any selected shape, this really is a useless button. In the Shape Styles group, right to the right of that here, you can make stylistic changes to your shape that affect the appearance of the fill and the line of the shape. First, you can scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box of Preset Shape Appearances and click on the one that you'd like to apply to your shape. You can of course roll your mouse pointer over to see them. You can scroll down or you could click the More button to see a full list of those that are available. Then to apply one, you just give it a click and you would apply it to your shape like that. We'll go ahead and undo that for now. You can also use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to customize the appearance of your shape. You can use the Shape Fill drop-down to fill the inside of your shape with one of the many available colors, pictures, gradients, or textures available. Now note that this button is unavailable for shapes that don't have any fillable area, such as lines and arrows. If you wish to select a fill color, then you can simply click on one of the color choices shown in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu. Rolling your mouse pointer will display it for you, but you could just click on one and it would apply it for you. Now, if you don't like any of those colors, and they aren't quite what you need, you could also select the More Fill Colors command and that will open up the Colors dialog box that we see here. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you desire. You can either click the Standard tab, which shows up by default, and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices. Just click around like that. And then you would click OK once you've made your choice or you can click the Custom tab and then select the color that you want. You can click into the color field. You can modify that color by clicking on the small triangle slider here and sliding it. You'll see the preview of the color down here at the bottom right. Or if you know the exact values in the RGB color model, you can enter those values into the red, green, and blue text boxes there. If you need an exact Pantone color match, you can click that tab and select from the Pantone area available here. Just give a click inside there to select one of those colors. 
Now note that at the bottom of each of these tabs, you can use the transparency slider to set the level of transparency that you want to apply. So I can click on the transparency slider at the bottom. All the way to the left is zero. All the way to the right is 100. You can slide that back and forth. And that's available on each of these tabs, like that. Now, if you opened the color dialog box, you just click the OK button once you've made a choice in order to apply that selected color. We'll click Cancel for right now. Now, also note that you can fill the selected shape with another sampled color from within the publication by selecting the Sample Fill Color command from the drop-down menu. Let's look at that next. We'll choose Sample Fill Color. When you do that, your mouse pointer will turn into a small eyedropper tool that we see here. And the idea with this is that you will sample a color from your existing publication by clicking with the mouse pointer. And whatever is underneath that little eyedropper tool there is the color that you'll select, like that. And so by doing that, you can match colors in your publication and add some continuity to your publication, like that. We'll go ahead and undo that. Now note that you can also fill the selected shape, if you want, with nothing. So if you have applied a fill and you don't want that anymore, you can either undo like I did, or you could select the No Fill command to not have any fill at all. But you could also insert your shape with a picture if you so desire. To do this, you would choose the picture command from the buttons drop down menu, choose picture, and that will open up the select picture dialog box that we see here, where you can navigate to the picture that you want, select it, and then click insert, and it will insert that picture into your shape for you. It's kind of a neat effect. You can also select a gradient to apply to the selected shape by rolling your mouse pointer over the gradient command in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu and then clicking on the preset gradient that you want to apply to the shape. Now a gradient is just a gradual change in colors and you'll see that here. So you can roll your mouse pointer over these and give one of them a click to apply it. And in this case, the gradient starts very light on the right-hand side and gradually turns into a darker blue at the left-hand side. Those are kind of fun. If you want to add a texture to a shape instead, then choose the Texture command from that drop-down. And from the side menu that appears, you have quite a few different choices of textures. You could click on more textures and you could select from those that are available or click other texture and apply your own if you want. Scroll up, give one a click and click OK and you'll apply a texture to your fill instead. We'll go ahead and undo that. You can also click the pattern command from the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu to open up the Fill Effects dialog box and show the Pattern tab. Let's look at that. It'll default to the Pattern tab that we see here. And here you can select not only the pattern that you want, but also a foreground and background color from the color pickers that are available, like that. Then, after you have selected your pattern and the colors, you just click OK to apply that particular pattern. Back in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you'll find the Shape Outline drop-down button. Let's look at that, just below that. And the choices that you make here will affect the appearance of the lines in the shape. Now this is also the button that you use to alter the appearance of the shape that are nothing more than lines, such as the line shape or the arrow shape. 
If you click the Shape Outline button, you'll see that you can easily select a color shown in the color palette of choices to change the line color of your selected shape, just as we did with the fill color, like that. If you want to remove a line color, then just select No Outline, like that. So again, this works in the same way as the fill color. So let's go ahead, we'll add one of those gradients back in. We'll go ahead and change our line color. to something we like. You can really play around until you find something that fits what you're trying to achieve artistically. Now, if you want to change the width of the shape's outline, then make a selection from the side menu of choices that appear when you roll your mouse pointer over the Weight command in the Shape Outline button's drop-down. So under Weight right here, under the side menu, just roll your mouse pointer over it, and you'll see the different weights that are applied. Give one a click to apply it. Now, likewise, you can choose a different dash style for the outline from the choices available in the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the dashes command instead. So you could change it to any of the available choices there if you wanted one of those, or you can just leave it solid. Now, if you're formatting a line shape or an arrow shape, then you can change the endpoints of the line or arrow by making a choice from the side menu that appears when you roll your mouse pointer over the arrows command in the shape outlines drop down. If you don't have one of those types of shapes selected, that will be grayed out and won't be available. Now, also like the fill color, you could select the pattern command to create a patterned line if you want to do that instead. Back in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you'll see the Change Shape button. That's this last one right here. And you can click this button to view a drop-down listing of the various shapes that you can substitute for the selected shape within the publication page. So you could just click on one and it would change the shape to the new one you selected. Next, we have the Shadow Effects group to the right right here. And in this group, on this tab, you can click the Shadow Effects drop-down button to select a desired shadow style. So we'll use that. Here are the shadow effects. We have the drop shadow, perspective shadow, and so forth. So you have a lot of different choices for adding a shadow to it like that. You could just click it to apply a shadow like that. We'll go ahead and undo that. Go back to our drop down here. Because you can also roll over the shadow color command in this drop down menu to choose a different color for your shape's shadow if you wanted to do that as well. So you could just choose from one of these colors. Let's say we're going to select a shadow. We'll choose this one here. Go back up to Shadow Effects. Use the drop down. Choose Shadow Color. You could go in and change. See how the shadow itself is just changing color. However you want to do that. Now, to the right of that button, let's look again up here, in the Shadow Effects area, you can click the Nudge Shadow buttons to nudge the shadow in the indicated direction. So if you don't like exactly how it's placed, you could nudge it down, for example. We can go back up into that tab could nudge it to the left, like that. So you can really have some really subtle effects with the placement of the shadow as well. 
You can also click the Turn Shadow On Off button to toggle the shadow display on or off. Let's look at that. Right here in the middle, just turn it off or turn it back on, like that. In the 3D Effects section, right to the right of that, right here, you can click the 3D Effects drop-down button to apply a 3D effect to your shape. Let's look at that. So, clicking on 3D Effects, using the drop-down, give that a click, and you'll see the choices that are available. Roll your mouse pointer over them and you'll see what that does to your shape. Really kind of cool. At the bottom of this drop-down menu, you can roll over the 3D color command. So let's select a 3D style. Let's use the drop-down. And we'll select 3D color. And you'll see that it changes just the three-dimensional part of the color. Give that a click to change that as well. Also, under 3D Effects, you can select Depth, Direction, Lighting, or Surface to change any of those aspects as well. So you have the depth, the direction, the lighting, and so you can change it to bright and normal and so forth. Again, rolling your mouse pointer over those shows you the various options. You can change any of those. To the right of the 3D effects drop down, you have some more options available right here. And those are the tilt buttons, which you can use to tilt the 3D object in the direction specified by the arrows. Tilt up, you can tilt down, tilt left, and so forth. You can also click the 3D on or off button to toggle the 3D effects on or off. That's located right here in the center, just like we did with the shadow. Now the buttons shown in the Arrange group, let's look at that next, over here. Again, on the Format tab, in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab, same place, these buttons allow you to change the placement and text wrapping for the selected shape. So first, you can click the Text Wrapping drop-down button in order to select from one of the preset text wrapping options for the selected shape, whatever one you would like to apply for that. Now if you have overlapping shapes in your document, as we do right now, we'll see that the currently selected shape that we've created overlaps this image that's behind it. And in a case like that, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons in order to change the order in which the shapes overlap each other in the stack. So you could send it backward, bring it forward, and so forth. Anytime you have overlapping objects like that, you can change how they're stacked in your presentation. You can also click the Align button in order to choose from one of the available alignment options. And again, this will align your selected object within the publication. We chose Align Right, so if we scroll over, we'll see it aligned it to the right side of the publication. We could align it back to the left as we scroll over. There it is again. And so you can change the alignment that way. Now, you can also use the Group button to group multiple selected shapes together as a single unit. Let's say, for example, we wanted to group this particular shape along with the image behind it. We'll select them both. Then you would click the Group button right here. Now they're grouped together. If I move those anywhere, or in this case move that group, they move together because they're grouped together. If you want to ungroup them, then you would just click the Ungroup command to ungroup them. Now, underneath the group commands, 
we have the rotate command. And this is kind of a fun one. You can click on this and you can roll your mouse pointer over to rotate or flip your object. You could also click to free rotate and if you do that you'll see these small green circles appear at the corners and when you roll your mouse pointer over them it'll turn into a small circular arrow. Click, hold down your mouse pointer and then drag and you can freely rotate that selected object however you like. Now like images you can also use the size section to resize the shape if desired. Now that's over obviously in the size group that we have right here and we have a drop down when we click on it. You can use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the shape height or shape width text boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the shape. Like that. Or of course you could enter a value into the text box if you'd rather do that as well. But you could also click the measurement button at the bottom to display the measurement panel where you can enter very specific measurements for the text box or shape if you so desire. To close that you would just click the X button in the upper right hand corner. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.